Welcome to this talk. It's Wednesday the 18th of August. Now it looks like the United States is going ahead with a booster dose as far as we can tell for everyone. There's going to be an official announcement today, Wednesday, sometime from the President. And th this is going to be uh, a major concern. You don't need me to tell you about the logistics of giving a third vaccine dose to the world when the majority of it hasn't had one vaccine dose yet. So quite profound implications for this. Let's look at some of the science behind this today. First of all, just a bit of news from the United States. Um, now, this is what's concerning me about the United States at the moment. This graph here is the number of people in hospital. And this is the 80,000 line. So there's a lot of people in hospital and it's not equally distributed. And that is the problem. And it does seem to be going up. And we do expect it to go up because the cases have been going up. So th that's my main concern there really uh, but going on going on to this vaccine idea the White House team uh, booster doses are probably going to start in September the FDA are probably going to be facilitating that in the next few weeks is, is what we're hearing and it's going to be eight months after the Pfizer or Moderna shot so eight months now I really don't think that we're going to need a vaccine for everyone after eight months um, but that's what the, the United States is putting forward at the moment. If we need that globally, then that makes the probability of getting rid of this virus much, much less in any reasonable time frame. Um, in the United States, anyway, they're going to give the same brand. If it's Pfizer, you get Pfizer. If it's Moderna, you get Moderna. And there's going to be news on the second dose of Johnson & Johnson in the next few weeks. The data for that is not that yet there. But I would imagine it's probably going to go that way um, as well. So this is looking pretty definite. As you watch this video now, it's probably going to be announced as policy, actually. UK, there's no decision on this yet. Um, but the United States, there will be today. Now, 7 million who are immunocompromised. Booster doses started in Detroit yesterday. So already booster doses have been given in Detroit for those that are immunocompromised. This is not remotely surprising. If people have a couple of doses of vaccine and it... Uh, it does. It doesn't uh, doesn't work properly. Then you give them a booster dose. That is that is routine. These people are not generating the normal level of immunity. Now, on a slightly separate matter, there's a Mr. Greg Abbott. Greg Abbott. Yeah, Mr. Greg Abbott lives in Texas. Uh, as an example, Tuesday he tested positive for COVID nineteen. He's in good health and experiencing no symptoms. We're pleased to say so. Pleased to say that Mr. Abbott is uh, is currently feeling well. That is excellent. Let's hope he continues to feel well. Um, but he was vaccinated in December, doubly vaccinated in December. So this is an example of breakthrough infection that we're looking at here. All his close contacts are being notified. And uh, and there's rumours that he may not have always been wearing a mask while out in public recently. So that could be an issue because, of course, the CDC guidelines are saying that people who are doubly vaccinated should be wearing a mask in public so that's just an interesting example now just before we go on to look at the third dose of vaccine in a bit more detail children in the united states an extra 121,000 children diagnosed in the past seven days hospital admissions have trebled in the last seven days and the predictive indicator seems to have changed so these are not all children who have comorbidities some of these children were previously healthy now I'm not going to deal in detail with that today. The numbers are still, of course, way smaller than adults, but it's, it is a concerning trend with the Delta variant uh, pandemic as it folds, unfolds in the United States. Now, we believe that most of the data that the, um, the American thinking is based on, the CD, CDC and FDA and White House uh, advisory team thinking is based on, in terms of this third dose of vaccine, it's partly stimulated by the Delta variant, of course, in the United States now. But the main place they seem to be getting their data from is Israel. So um, this is from the Israel uh, Ministry of Health. Now, this is actually the preprint paper that they've put out relating to that. Uh, check it out for yourself there. Not yet peer reviewed, but given that the data is coming from the uh, Israeli Ministry of Health, I would expect it to be pretty good data. This is basically whole population studies. So 2.5 million people, 16 and over. Second dose administered within 21 to 28 days, interval set by national guidelines. So this is what happened in Israel. People were given the second dose between 21 and 28 days. Now, this is not the optimum time 
for boosting immunity. We need, for a longer lived, better immune response, we need a longer gap between the doses. And in the UK, this was pure serendipity. In the UK, we needed to get the vaccination programme going. We didn't have enough vaccines, so we extended the gap between the first and the second dose to give as many people coverage from the first dose as possible. It later transpired... We didn't know that at the time, but it transpired that this was very fortunate because the longer time gap gives a better level and a greater longevity, as far as we know, of immune cover. But this has not been done in Israel, and of course it wasn't done in the United States either. Uh, so um, in Israel, a significant drop in protection against hospitalizations amongst people over the age of 65. So this is what's happening uh, now. This is what will be happening in the United States and um in Israel already it's happening at the moment that healthcare providers and the most vulnerable groups are going to be vaccinated first and then rolling down to the younger age groups later. Who were vaccinated in January and February? So people over the age of 65 are having reduced uh, a significant drop in protection against hospitalisation in older people. This is a concern in Israel. People who were vaccinated back in January, February, hence the eight month time scale that the US is now considering. Um, Delta variant became the dominant variant in Israel as late as June 2021, and of course that changed, basically, uh, basically changed everything. This is the uh, this is the problem at the moment. But carrying on with the Israel situation, the Israel data, um, Israel is currently experiencing surging cases, as we know. So this is the increase in cases in Israel now. This is this is the Delta variant surge in Israel, basically. It is uh, increasing. Now, the amount of people doubly vaccinated in Israel isn't actually massive. It's only about 62%, I think, or is it 64%? It's around about that. So there's actually quite a lot of people aren't vaccinated in Israel, which, of course, is a massive, massive factor. The correlation between antibody dynamics and clinical protection remains um, unidentified, according to this paper. In other words, what they're saying here is you can't just measure antibodies to measure how immune someone is, because we know there's many different aspects to immunity as well as antibodies. There's the B cells, the T cells, the memory cells, the natural killer cells, uh, various uh, antiviral chemicals that are made, the interferon mechanisms. Immunity is multi-layered. So we can't just go by antibodies. Therefore, we need to go by the empirical real world data is what they're saying. The antibodies alone are too simplistic. Correlation between time from vaccine and incidence of breakthrough infection is the title of the paper. And here they're saying we found that the risk of infection was significantly higher for early vaccines, people vaccinated compared to those vaccinated later. So this is a significant difference. And given that we like a bit of detail here, we'll just say briefly what that is. They did two statistical models on this. Model one, they matched a group of uh, 329,000 persons in each group. So pretty good numbers. And here they found 1,911 breakthrough cases were recorded. So the, the, the groups here that, that they took, that, that they matched 329,000 people who'd been vaccinated early and vaccinated late. And in, that, in those two groups, they found... 1,911 cases of people that have been doubly vaccinated as per the Israeli criteria that got breakthrough infections, whether symptomatic or asymptomatic. Uh, they, they divided the groups into early vaccine groups and late vaccine groups. And uh, 1,151 of these people were in the early vaccine group, whereas the later vaccine group were more protected. There was only 760 in the late vaccine group. And the difference between those two is significant the difference between those two numbers is significant <clears throat> we found a statistically significant 53 percent increase for breakthrough infections in early vaccinees so 53 percent decrease in protection or 50 we found a statistically significant 53 percent increase for breakthrough infections in early vaccinees indicating that there had been a 53 percent waning of the level of protection and we found a similar trend across all age groups. So this is not just in older people, the immunity reduced in all age groups compared to others in that same age group. So that was one statistical model they used. The second statistical model they used was a bit different, different statistical methodologies. Individuals who were vaccinated in January uh, 2021 
had a 2.6 fold increase risk for breakthrough infection compared to those who were vaccinated in April. So January, February, March, April, only three or four months difference and yet 2.26 fold increased risk for breakthrough infections in the people who had vaccinated earlier, indicating that the effect of the vaccine was waning. Um, I would expect the waning to be less in the UK where there's been a longer gap, but this is where we have the data now and this seems to be what the US decision making is based on analysis of the Israeli data. And of course, the um, the Israeli authorities and the American authorities are cooperating much more than this simple data that is published would, would indicate. Israel has already started giving booster doses over the age of uh, 50. So fair enough. They've started that based on their data. Data on all symptomatic sequence cases, cases of COVID-19 in England. Now, th th this is now data from uh, England. Now, not a lot of data on longevity in England, but uh, very much so much, plenty of data here on um, how long the, uh, the, the difference between the one and the two doses. So um, effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines against B1.6172 Delta variant first identified in India, published in New England Journal of Medicine. So after one dose of Pfizer or AstraZeneca, the efficiency was, uh, efficacy was 31% protection. Um, with the Delta variant, down from 49% protection against the Alpha variant, and that was in itself down from the wild type variant. Showing the importance of two doses, after two doses of Pfizer, Alpha efficiency against the Alpha variant, 94%, down to 88% with the Delta variant, so still pretty good against, that's protection against um, all symptomatic sequence people in England. After two doses of AstraZeneca, um, alpha efficiency was 75. And after two doses of AstraZeneca, um, data efficacy was 67% uh, protection against infection. So um, not as good, not as good as the Pfizer and Moderna. Although the proviso we have to put on that, of course, is that um, the Pfizer and Moderna protection does kick in earlier. Uh, the United States Authority also looking at data from Qatar, which of course was uh, vaccinated well and early. Um, so that's the uh, vaccine and the vaccine. So, so that is the Pfizer vaccine there. That one's the Moderna vaccine there. COVID-19 vaccine effectiveness against the Delta variant in Qatar. Effectiveness against uh, any severe critical or fatal COVID-19 disease due to Delta variant was basically 90%. So... Still getting 90% protection with the Pfizer or the Moderna uh, against severe or critical cases. So still fairly good levels of protection, but not 100% by any means. Both the Pfizer and the Moderna are highly effective in preventing Delta hospitalisation and death, but less so in preventing infections, as we know. That's why there's so many cases in the States at the moment. Uh, Moderna may protect against symptomatic infection more than the Pfizer, according to provisional data, so... That is what data from uh, Qatar is showing. So we see there that most of the predictive data, in fact, pretty well all of the predictive data is coming from Israel. Now, the UK, are, of course, are protecting, are collecting longevity of uh, vaccination immunity data. And the United States are probably going to be publishing data, could be today or tomorrow on that. So we'll have something more definitive from the United States itself. But given that we are expecting President Biden today to announce that a booster dose is going to be necessary, it is basically now inevitable that the data from the United States does show a waning in immunity at eight months. How much less that waning will be in the UK situation where we have the longer gap between vaccines, we don't yet know. This is actually a bit, it's a bit depressing this. It's not what I'd hoped for. I had hoped that immunity would last for longer. Uh, there are aspects of immunity which do last for longer, natural infection, especially natural infection followed by vaccination. But these are people that have just had vaccines and that is what the thinking currently is. And I, I, I really is quite, it really is quite disappointing. There's no two ways about that, to be quite honest. It's, um, it's, not, it's not what we'd hope for by any means. Uh, Paul A. Offit, paediatrician, vaccine expert, who we've quoted, many, many people quote, 
says this, we could have done a much better job at uh, setting realistic expectations for this vaccine. And I think it's hurt us because I think people get disappointed. They think that the vaccine isn't working, but of course it is. So nice of uh, Dr. Offit to try and uh, console me somewhat there, but um, it still is a bit disappointing. But he's right, it was probably over-talked up. Third dose looking necessary for everyone in the States. Centre for Disease Control Prevention. Now, this was the leaked PowerPoint. Now, all we have at the moment from the Centre for Disease Control, we looked at this in quite a lot of detail, um, that the PowerPoint that was leaked from the Centre for Disease Control. Was it leaked deliberately? Was it leaked on purpose? We got about a thousand comments each way on that at the time. Uh, still don't have enough data to adjudicate on that. 29th of July, the uh, the Centre for Disease Control was saying 35,000 breakthrough infections a week. Although on this leaked PowerPoint alone, the data behind that was not given, but we can assume it's right. 35,000 breakthrough infections a week back in July. Now at the 18th of August, we can assume that it is oh, double that probably. Maybe yeah, a lot more than that. Now the protection against the, the idea of a hospitalisation. CDC director, Dr. Wilinski, um, statement that 97% of people hospitalised by the virus are unvaccinated, which the CDC has been saying. Now, she's actually been questioned on this twice this week, and she now admits that that data is out of date. But it's not yet been updated. So I think what we can infer from this is that we did, we, the, the data was, it was true that 97% of people hospitalised uh, by the virus in the United States were unvaccinated. I think we can now assume that's less. So is it 90, 91, 92, 93, 94? We, we, we don't know. But I think from that we can assume it's less than 97, which of course is is not good. CDC on Friday, CDC said on Friday, just from press releases this, 40 to 44% of patients hospitalised with breakthrough infections have compromised immune systems. So there's compromised immunity accounting for 40 to 44%. And uh, how many? It's uh, more, it's now, we now know it's more than 3% of people uh, are hospitalised after being vaccinated. Whether it's four or five, we, we don't know. But it's less than we had hoped. Heather Scobie, member for the CDC's COVID 19 response team. Uh, Delta has high prevalence in the US and has moderate impact on vaccine effectiveness. So she's saying it's moderate, which is being uh, optimistic and good. Uh, the vaccines are likely to still provide protection against severe disease, which is basically still largely true, although slightly less true than we had uh, hoped. Um, the potential for waning immunity is there. And she quoted, as we've just said, Canada, Qatar, England, uh, Israel, England, Scotland data she's looked at. And um, she said, as a result of her review, vaccine uh, effectiveness at uh, presenting infection, uh, preventing infection range from 40 to 80 percent. So very wide distribution. How good the vaccinations were at preventing uh, in symptomatic disease or actually just preventing infections she's talking about there depending on where the data was collected. Um, effectiveness against severe illness, 90% uh, for vaccine participants overall. So 90% um, so efficiency overall, rather than the 97 we were hoping for. So, but she did say there's big unknowns because differences in methodologies between studies. So there's still a lot of things we don't know about, but we are expecting CDC data pretty soon. Uh, Amisha Jaila, uh, senior scholar at John Hopkins Centre for Health. This is just to finish now. Breakthrough infections were expected, which is true. The goal of the vaccine was to make breakthrough infections clinically inconsequential. And that's what they're doing. Well, yes, in the vast majority of cases, that's true but not in every case. So that doesn't get a tick. That gets, well, maybe gets a little one. Um, but but it's, um, it's not always clinically inconsequential, just the vast majority of cases. I suspect that maybe someday I'll get a breakthrough infection, he says. Yes. Uh, but I'm okay with that because I'm vaccinated. Good. 
and I know that the breakthrough infection will be mild. No is a very strong word. If it said, and I believe it's an overwhelmingly likely outcome uh, that the breakthrough infection will be mild, I would agree. But no is a quite a big word, really. This is an endemic respiratory virus. Everyone's going to encounter it uh, repeatedly. I'm afraid it's going to be true for the next few years. This is not going to be eradicated as quickly as I had hoped. And this is bad news in terms of the time it's going to take us to eradic eradicate the virus. Or indeed, it's looking now like it could be endemic for, for our lifetimes. That's quite conceivable now, Un unfortunately, certainly for my lifetime. Um, the slightly good news here is um, if it's endemic, people will be getting exposed repeatedly. People that are vaccinated get minimal uh, symptoms. Uh, therefore, every time they get re-exposed, that will boost their immunity. So people that are re-exposed naturally, like Mr. Abbott of Texas, who've had two doses of the vaccine and thankfully are not sick, Mr. Abbott's immunity should be better in a couple of weeks' time than it was before he was reinfected. Let, let, let's hope that's the case and he has no complications. So that's that's that situation. Um, the big concern is poorer countries that already only have vaccine vaccination rates of one or two percent. Um, if they're going to need a booster dose every year, I really can't see that happening, which means that the virus is going to be around. And then, of course, if the virus is around, there's the opportunity for mutating. And uh, that that is that is going to be an ongoing concern and is going to be need to monitored for quite a few years to come. So there you go. It looks like you and me uh, are going to be getting a, a third dose of vaccine at some point. And uh, thank you for watching.